Thanks, Richard. As mentioned, my name is Gary Cobb, and I'm a solutions engineer here at Jitterbit. Today, I'll be showing how simple it is to convert system data to and from an EDI format, and I'll walk us through our EDI administrative portal. We'll start by mapping orders from SAP to an EDI format, and then placing that resulting document in an SFTP site. We'll then go the opposite way, where we take that same EDI document from our SFTP site and convert it into a Salesforce object. And we'll then wrap up by viewing some transaction logs and creating a trading partner in our EDI portal. Today, we're using SAP, Salesforce, and an SFTP site, but these systems should be thought of as interchangeable with any systems you're currently working with. We're also going to be working with orders in today's examples. However, Jitterbit handles all EDI documents, invoices, shipping acknowledgements, product and pricing information, just to name a few. You can see here I'm starting in the Jitterbit Studio, where I have an operation querying, querying data out of SAP, transforming it into an EDI document, and upserting it into an SFTP site. Let's click into this transformation, where we can see just how simple it is to take the SAP response here on the left and transform it into our EDI document on the right. Here we have an example of a transformation where we're concatenating two fields a street housing number and a street name concatenated into one field in our EDI document. We can drag fields from the left and drop them on the right to create more mappings. We can hard code fields in. The terminator, for example, hard coded as a dollar sign. Or we can call on one of over 250 plus functions from Jitterbit. In this case, I'm calling on the now function which grabs the current timestamp that the operations ran at. And I'm converting that timestamp to a year, year, month, month, day, day format with the format date function. I have more functions available to me below. And I can test any of these functions as needed without actually running my operation to ensure that my EDI is being formatted correctly. This, of course, saves time and makes it simpler to work with. Now I can run this operation on a schedule, as exemplified down here, or I can run it manually, or I can have it triggered by some other system. Now I'm gonna run this manually today, and before I do that, let's look at the SFTP site and verify that we currently have 44 files, and once this is ran, we'll have a 45th file, namely our SAP demo 850.edi document. Now while it's running, I'd like to highlight that we do have some plugins available to us to make working with EDI that much simpler. Today I'm using the EDI plugin, which helps convert from XML to EDI. However, I also have the splitter plugin, which allows me to take large EDI documents and split that down into smaller chunked up EDI documents. And I also have a validator plugin, which allows me to ensure that certain conditions are met Now that this process is finished, in a matter of nearly five seconds, we'll go verify that we have a 45th document in our SFTP site, our SAP demo 850.edi document. And so now that we've gone from a system to EDI, let's go the opposite way. Where we'll take an EDI document and upset that into a system, specifically Salesforce. Here you can see I have two operations chained together. The first operation is taking that document that we just created, converting it into a Salesforce object, specifically orders, and upserting that into Salesforce. Once this operation completes, we have a second operation running, which will again read that same EDI document and then populate our orders with products as specified within the EDI document. Now again, I could run this on in a schedule or manually, which I'll do today. But before I do that, let's jump into Salesforce and ensure that we currently don't have any orders. Now, while this is running, I want to highlight that we are working with one document in this case. However, we're processing this in a matter of seconds. And Jitterbit is certainly poised to handle hundreds or even thousands of documents in a matter of mere minutes. 
So you can see here that this is processed very quickly. And if I go back to Salesforce, we can see that we now have our order document. And so now that we've gone from a system to EDI and from EDI to a system, let's walk through our EDI administrator portal. Here you can see I'm starting out in our logs. And if I refresh this, I'll see the processes we just ran. I can select any time period I'd like. And I can dig in and see any EDI document that was created by any of these transactions. Now creating trading partners within EDI for our EDI processes is very simple with Jitterbit. We'll simply go into our company's module, populate the appropriate information. We'll go into our identities module, select our EDI qualifier, EDI address, and map that to those to a company name. We'll go into our maps module where we can see our Jitterbit transformation and operation and the resulting document type and transaction type and then we'll tie it all together with our relationships module where you can see I select my sender address my receiver address the map name any number I'd want to start on control number and any acknowledgement that I'd want to be sent once this transaction is completed And so that's a brief demonstration of how Jitterbit can help automate your EDI processes from both the sending and per consumption perspectives, along with a brief overview of how to create a trading partner in e your EDI portal and view the logs of any past transactions. Again, the systems we've been using today and the document types we've been using are all interchangeable with any other system or any other EDI document that you might be using. So regardless of the systems or the document types, the process is going to be fairly simple as you saw today. That's it for me. At this point, I'll hand it back to you, Richard.